Today, we are going to dive deep into the numbers for Freena and seeing what and why she does what she does while helping you understand more about the numbers and how they work. But first, we must cover her weapons. And the best way to gauge what weapons are best for her are the damage charts that were made for her. And it shows that her best in slot is obviously Splinter of Still Waters, doing 15% more damage than Festering Desire. And funny enough, Festering Desire does more damage than some of the five stars. But if you don't have those two weapons, you can just go down the list until there's something that you have. But the key is normally used for when she's in a Bloom team as a sub DPS slash booster, giving her a 20% HP bonus and elemental mastery based on max HP, which is 144 elemental mastery to Farina and 80 elemental mastery to the nearby party member at 40,000 HP and 216 elemental mastery with 120 elemental mastery to a nearby party member at 60,000 HP. And for good four stars you can use is the fishing one that I can't even properly say at R5 obviously. And if you're down bad, you could just use Favonius. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about her skill. I will be using a 40,000 HP Farina with 200% crit damage. And I'll also put up the damage and total self boost on the top right corner. Her skill summons three mobs that will attack whoever you are attacking. The damage depends on each mob, with the seahorse doing the least AoE and the crab doing the most. The bigger the AoE, the more HP they'll take, the more damage they do, and the slower fire rate they'll have. The smaller AoE, the less HP they take, the less damage, and the higher fire rate they have, just like every other game you've seen. And when they attack, they will take some of your party members HP as long as they're above 50% HP. And when the skill takes HP from 1, th 2, 3, 4 party members, you'll get a 110, 120, 130, 140 bonus in damage, which is quite confusing and it might have made all my math wrong because I don't know where that damage percent goes into for all the math. I couldn't find out where they go, but I do have Farina, and I can say with confidence that all of the numbers should be right or very close. And at talent level 10, the crab's damage is 15% of Farina's max HP, but because enemies have defense, you'll only do 45% of that damage, and the defense of mobs changes a lot, and even more so with levels and level gaps, but that's way too complex for this video, and I'll be using a level 91 crab that I randomly came across in Fontaine that's just a dummy for damage. And first, we'll start with its base scaling. The one that people care the most about, aka the 15% crab one, which is 1.7 times more scaling than Yolan's barbs, so it does do some very good base damage. 15% of 40,000 is 6,000, and 45% of 6,000 is 2.7 thousand real damage you'll be doing, and on a crit, you'll do 8.1 thousand damage. Now, the damage bonuses do get added together in the math, which causes massive diminishing returns, especially with Farina, and I'm going to assume that the 140% damage increase from the HP drain just changes the raw numbers. And with that in mind, having a 28% damage bonus from the talent, you will be doing 6.4 thousand damage. And on a crit, you will be doing 19.8 thousand. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about artifacts here for a second, because it's important to continue adding more damage. And out of all the artifacts, the best one to use is the Golden True. Even after diminishing returns, it's still our best in slot by a good margin. And for other artifacts, honestly, just use Golden Troop. And if you don't have any Golden Troop, you can use placeholders. And when you're getting artifacts for a character, you should always use their best ones. So you do the best damage. But Golden Troop gets 20% skill damage bonus on the two piece. And on the four piece has a total of 45% if she's on field and has a total of 70% if she's off field, which brings the counter's total up to 98% damage boost and 12.8k damage with a 38.4k crit. And now you could start to see the diminishing returns here. And because of those diminishing returns, you will need to use a HP% goblet instead of a hydro damage bonus one. 
And for energy recharge, you should try to manage 140 to 160 energy recharge. Well, the exact amount you need depends on a lot of things. And if energy recharge is too low, then you should get more ER. And if it's too high, you should get less ER. But three hydro, you normally need around like 150, give or take, for 100% uptime. And for crit rate, get 70 to 85%. And then you could try to aim for 200 plus crit damage. And now we could finally talk about the burst. Brina's burst gives a stupidly high amount of damage bonus percent based on how many fanfare stacks you have. And you get them by having any party member lose HP or gain HP. Quite simple, caps out at 300 stacks. And at talent level 10, you get a 75% damage bonus. Or at C1, that would be 100% damage bonus for an energy cost of 60. So that's a colossal stat stick for all of your party members with a relatively low energy cost. And brings the counter's total damage bonus up to 173% with 17.6k damage and a 53k crit. And for C1, that will be 198% damage bonus and a 19.3k damage with a 57.9k crit. C2 makes her HP go from 40,000 to 60,000 not long after using her ultimate, making her very OP and less punishing on damage when you're running a ER Sands instead of an HP Sands, while also allowing you to get max fanfare stacks almost instantly unlocking a very large amount of teen comps while c3 makes the ultimate go from 100 percent to 120 percent damage bonus c4 gives her 12 to 16 energy making her burst cost 48 energy which allows you to get more offensive artifact stats and sub stats c5 gives more skill damage and c6 is just crazy it turns her into an on-field dps doing stupid damage and i'm not about to spend 30 minutes talking about it on this video so next we talk about teams before i tell you some of the teams i want to let you know that it does not make balloons do any more damage so you will be missing out on a massive chunk of her potential if you do use her in a bloom focused team but because of that 100 percent damage bonus she'll go in any team that likes damage bonus but as long as you use her with someone like gene though and instead of listing all of the teams that you could put her in i'll explain why you would want to put her in your team and you will be able to use that information so you can make all the teams you want our skill damage does an unfair amount of damage while eating your hp while putting hydro on the enemies not super often with some medium aoe her burst makes zero sense whatsoever because of how overpowered it is aka gives that 75 percent or 100 percent damage bonus with an energy cost of 60 allowing for some crazy buffs that can surpass Bennett. Because of that HP drain, you can easily run artifacts that have effects related to you losing HP, which literally changes the entire game, making that one domain that you had to farm Golden Troop in extremely valuable, especially if you use her a lot. The cons. Because of the HP theft, you will need a healer and someone who can reliably heal the entire team at once and in almost every single situation. You'll be using Jean due to the healing on the initial hit, while Sayu could be a budget option for you. And I want to tell you that C2 unlocks most of the team comps, sadly. And knowing those things, you can make too many teams to list. But some of the ones that seem very promising are C0 Farina with Nervalette. You can have Nervalette, Farina, Zhongli, Shielder, Kazuha. And Jean, those are the ones you'd usually use. There's Farina Flex Tape, which is a hilarious name. It makes anything overpowered just by slapping Farina and Jean onto it, making whatever character that you like the most do a crazy amount of damage. You could also put Farina, Yolan, and Jean into that team with whatever character you want, making any character stupidly powerful. Then there's Bloom with Bailu and Nahida. Farina could be used in Bloom teams, especially with the key, but personally, it does feel weird since the Bloom's don't even get the boost in damage, but using her as a sub DPS slash damage boost can be overpowered, especially using Yolan in the Bloom teams, but 
she does need a lot of healing. That's why Biolu is highly recommended with it. Same with Nahida. She can do big numbers with this skill. So the boost will work with her. Uh, you can also use an on-field Kokomi with Bloom. That's just a suggestion, I guess. I'm going to show you the one that I use the most, which is Yolan main DPS. And I'll even show a, a video of just me single cycling the Raiden boss while I wrap up the video here. I did not expect that to destroy my voice like it did. Oh my. But I've been struggling to write this script. I might have missed a few things. I just realized at the end that I actually forgot to talk about her overhealing. Her overhealing is nice. The main benefit is like counting for the fanfare stack. But her skill doesn't even heal. Like the, the healing one doesn't even overheal at all which is just so weird and i'm not even gonna go into the numbers for that because who the hell even uses it but on the open world which is one i really want to talk about here <laughs> off script is farina could just be really fun just in the open world she can obviously walk on water so she is just jesus christ apparently and her skill allows you to heal whenever you want on one of our constellations, I remember reading that you can get energy from healing. So all you have to do is just jump off a cliff, take a bunch of damage, and then just start healing. And you can get your energy up without actually fighting any mobs. Which is pretty nice and interesting. I feel like I did rush the video a lot. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm going at a fast pace. Trying to be energetic. This was supposed to be like a 50 minute video, but apparently it's only 20 minutes long. So that's nice for you, I guess. My overall thoughts on is that she's actually just way too overpowered. Everyone was saying that the Hydro Archon was going to be the most powerful due to Hydro having the strongest reactions. But that was very true and very wrong. She has not much to do with reactions at all. But my god, 100% damage bonus. What the hell is this? Fucking Star Rail with Branya? Jesus. That is just a, like, just stupid number. That number is so high that it, it's just a stat stick. It unironically changes the entire game. Her, the way how she works with the one artifact that I can't even pronounce is crazy. It makes any damage dealer use a completely different artifact set and get boosted like just a crazy amount like that's just insane but i also got to say that i have a feeling that the artifacts might change due to the sheer amount of diminishing returns it is destined that she will have some sort of change in the future i don't know exactly what but i do know the other artifact that you can get in the golden troop domain is actually pretty close in DPS if you do it right. And that alone just tells you that she might have some sort of artifact swap in the future. And her weapon, like, it, it doesn't seem like it's a must pull, but I don't have any regrets pulling for it, so. I also want to say that her damage is just flat out just stupid. Like, that, it's just so high. It makes sense. Though. because in order for farina to actually work she is two mem like she's two party members like she will always take two slots almost always with no exception so i'm guessing they treated her as like two characters in one that's why she's just so stupidly broken because you are forced to use gene with her and gene because of the viridescent Fenderer set or whatever the hell. So you're gonna need a animal healer, guaranteed. You need an animal healer. If you're using Bloom, you do not need an animal healer. Don't actually use an animal healer. I don't even recommend Bloom at all. I highly recommend not using Bloom. But I do think it's really nice. She's a great character. One that is by far the best character in the entire game. I'm just gonna be real. It's the best fucking character in the entire game. I don't give two shits that she is not a main DPS. She is the dumbest character in the entire, like, franchise. My god. <laughs> I have never seen numbers that big. Ever. Like, that sheer, like, like, I was able to hit 90,000 on the skill. Why? I only look at one of the damages. Out of the three, 
like gang members that will be like gang banging all the fucking mobs the crab is the only one that i actually look at and it does by far like just the craziest damage it makes no sense Ninety thousand damage why just why L literally why and not only that, the 100% damage bonus that you have, because let's be real, everyone should be going for C1, C2. But yeah, and the, one of the biggest downside is actually she was made by like EA, because my god, half her teams, actually it's more like 80% of all of her teams become paywalled, because you have to have like C2 in order to actually get her to like actually be used in other teams that don't have like Nervalette and stuff due to the fanfare actually taking you like a hot minute to get max stacks of that's all of it honestly hopefully the video uh cleared a thing a few things up for you made it obvious that she's a must pull and that's all see ya